well, it is the last week of summer. It's lawn renovation week. Cheers, I'm excited. G'day and welcome to a new video. It is nice and early on a Sunday morning, early for a Sunday. It's like 9am, it's not too early, but I'm out here about to get stuck into my big lawn renovation to finish off the season out here on this back lawn, which is a little thick, a little thatchy. Um, Want to get some core aeration and some top dressing done to see out the season. So you can see just here what I'm talking about. Like there is a fair thickness to it. And you know, that is definitely not 20, 25 mil. It is really starting to float up on top of that excess, gross, dead stuff, on overly thick grass. I am usually fortunate enough to be able to avoid the weekends to record. But during the week, my wife said to me some magic words. Oh, I'm gonna take the boys out to see Sarah for a couple of hours on Sunday. So I was like, bang. This renovation is going to start on Sunday, <laughs> not Tuesday. So what I'm going to start with, I'm constantly playing around. So I've released my lawn renovation guide, which you can see uh, at lawnsingoodnick.com, I think it is. But I think something I am playing around with a lot is finding the best order and the best method to do things between my scarifier, this battery scarifier, my cylinder mower and my rotary mower and the best order to do things. Normally I just say, get your rotary mower, scalp nice and low, allows your scarifier to get in deeper and then you know move on to the next steps. I do see a lot of people who will thin out or they'll verticut first um, and really thin things out and then that can probably make your scalp a lot easier. Then you go in and you dig out more of the thatch. So. So what I'm gonna to try today is scarify first to really loosen up the surface, really let it dig in and pull up a lot of material. Um, I still actually at this point in time have not decided if I'm then going to go into a rotary cut or a cylinder cut. I'll see how I'm feeling. But once I've sort of cut into it a bit more and cleaned up those scarifyings, probably all I'm gonna get done this morning. And then a couple of days time is when the scalp will really get nice and low and the scarifier will continue. So without further ado, let's start by getting into this. Because it is a little bit uh, damp and dewy out here this morning, it's not working uh, probably as perfectly as I would hope and obviously being a light battery machine. Um, this renovation, I didn't go through Kennards for the, for the de-thatcher machine that they have, the Scarifier. Um, I was just like, look, I've got the Ryobi. Whenever I want to be able to use it, I can just whip it out of the shed. And so that's exactly what I've been able to do today, obviously. Um, so yeah, it's doing a decent job um, from this six amp battery so far. I've used, I've got one bar left, so I'll swap that over to the other battery in a minute. Um, it's taking a bit of time. I'm walking really slowly to really let those blades dig right in and pull up plenty of material. And then that's looking really thin, which is good. Um, and then I think I'm going to set the cylinder mower because um, if the sun can come up over those trees <laughs> and dry out these clippings, it'd be no problem for the rotary mower, but I think I'm just gonna chuck the cylinder across it. Uh, my last cut was at 20 mil, so I'm probably gonna go to say 16 or something like that, clean it up. And then I think I'll probably cut again with the cylinder at maybe 10, and then I'll start with the rotary at about 10. But once again, that is gonna be in a couple of days time. So I'm gonna knock off what I've got um, here with the time that I have left. And probably the next time I'll chat to you will be on Tuesday, ready to continue shredding apart this lawn.
right, decided to do a quick check-in before I forget by the time it gets to Tuesday. But in the end, I've had three and a half hours at this, which is fantastic. So did that Scarify, went over at 16 mil. I then tried to go to 10 mil, but the MoMaster was just cutting out a bit, which is odd. Um, it is a high cut model. I don't think it's necessarily designed to be going super low. So anyway, uh, especially when it's really thick. So yeah, did that 10 mil cut and then I messaged and said, how much longer and I had time for another cut. So I brought it up from the 10, sorry, to 12. Um, so I've mowed it twice at 12 mil. I've taken out a heap, heap of material. Um, I do have a trailer booked to be able to take my clippings uh, away this time. Uh, I have figured out that if you just kind of chuck a bucket full of, or a tub full of clippings, it just kind of disperses. And I was probably being a bit silly by dumping piles out the back, um, you know? So not, I, I, not that I did that. Um, if the council's watching, um, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I've removed a heap. Uh, first thing Tuesday, rotary mower, get it low, scalp it down, get that scarifier off across it at least twice and dig out as much thatch as possible. I'm stoked to have gotten this done today because the more I got done today, I don't have to do on Wednesday when it's 37 degrees. So yeah, ripping out heaps of dead stuff great to do at the end of the season to really thin it out and send it into winter a lot healthier and not as spongy and um, yeah thatchy so good to get that done back into it in a couple of days time damn I need some food So this video has been rolling 13 minutes. The scalp has started, one, two, three, four, five. Five um, runs, and I've probably got 30 to go. So at the moment, um, because the grass is just a little bit wet, the mower is not kicking it into the back of the catcher very well at all. And this is something where I'm really trying to um, have the, the minimal impact on my body, I guess. Do it the smartest way possible to get it done the most efficient way and constantly bending over <laughs> to, um, to shuffle back clippings into the catcher or to pick the catcher up is not ideal. So what I think I'm going to try, because um, also I've gone from a number two and I raised it up to a number three and it hasn't really helped that much. So I think I'm gonna take the catcher off, I'm gonna put it on a number two and I'm just going to annihilate the clippings as much as possible. Hopefully the mower will just power through and keep going. And then I'll be able to, once the sun comes up and dries out the clippings a bit, they'll be easier to pull up into the catcher and take away um, and dispose of. So let's try that. <laughs> uh, see how this goes. The scalp rolls on with cleaning it up here and far out. It makes such a massive difference having dry clippings to pick up. So um, I've started off um, setting it low and it's just getting way too bunched up um, on the front of the mower when I'm cutting at what I would normally do after a scalp because these little mounds have been created from the mower spitting the clippings out to one side. So yeah, I am gonna have to go across the entire lawn twice because what's being left here, I don't wanna scalp, sorry, scarify into that. There's just too much being left over and these mounds are a real pain. So I can really whip across quickly now. Um, so I'll just be stopping in the middle of the lawn every time uh, to stock up the cart. 
chuck it in the trailer. Um, yeah, whip across here twice. It is gonna take a little while, and this is what I mean about trying to find the most efficient way possible to do this, is that I'd really like to get it nice and clean before scarifying to really allow space for that scarifier just hit into that thatch layer, into that soil to rip it out, uh, to rip out the thatch like we want it to. Um, and so on a small lawn, I'd probably be like, oh, you know, I'll go over it a few times, get it really nice and clean. But every extra time that I go over this lawn, you know, I'm stopping to empty the catcher multiple times. Every time I go across it, I'm obviously emptying it less, but it just takes so much time, you know. Each time, you go, oh, I'll just go over it one more time. On a small lawn is five, six, seven minutes. On this lawn is 20, 25, 30 minutes. So that's what I mean, just working away at it. So hopefully, We'll get it nice and clean after this. Starting to get a little bit low on storage here, but um, there's the scarify done, and that little Ryobi is doing a good job. It's a good little machine for what it is. So we're ripping up all of these nice, thick, juicy bits of kaiku, um, really digging up that thatch and that excess growth, and just freshening this grass up really, really nicely. I've got three batteries for that 36 volt machine. I don't know how much is left on that, that one that I've just put in, but I've got, I used a four amp, I moved on to a six amp. So yeah, um, less than 10 amps to do 500 square meters on that lowest setting, which is really, really good. So I'm now gonna zing across here, pick those clippings up. Uh, it's a little bit boring to watch that. So I'll probably check in again. Um, Hopefully you've got time to scarify again. So we'll get that done today and cleaned up. Coring tomorrow, but that's gonna be in the next video. So anyway, we roll on. Rightio, solid day at the office. Um, really getting some solid work out of the scarifier. So it's these vertical blades here, ripping down into that thatch layer, which will basically just make the lawn unhealthy. It'll prevent water, nutrients, air, getting down into that soil. So really opening it up, digging out that thatch. The level that I've gone to here, buffalo owners, to be honest, this is all right. There's still, oh, yeah. If this was buffalo right now, You've still got runners across here. You've still got leaf in some areas. Um, you know, I'd be pretty comfy taking a buffalo lawn, if it was mine, <laughs> not to um, the mate's lawn I worked on. Um, but yeah, I'd be pretty comfortable taking it to this level, to be honest, because there's still plenty of roots here for it to recoup. But yeah, Kaikuyu as a whole gets really thatchy. Some cooch varieties uh, that tend to thatch up a bit more than your zoysias, your buffaloes, your cool season grasses. Um, but certainly this work here is gonna make this lawn a lot, a lot nicer for the winter time. So yeah, I think in terms of battery power, I'm saying about two amp hours per 100 square meters for the 36 volt model. I reckon that's about right. So if you've got 100 square meters, you wanna go over it twice, a four amp battery should get that job done for you. And I don't know if I've got a certain charger or and whatnot, but they charge pretty quick too. So in the time that it has taken me to clean up all of this mess, um, about 10 minutes ago, it was at three quarter charge from one bar that it was at, and that's a six amp battery. So recharging really well. So look, I'm gonna rip over this one more time um, and then clean up as much as possible before it's time to do some parenting for the evening. And maybe I'll be finishing it off tomorrow. 38,230 steps, which is great. So, so far, this has been 
nine and a half hours work to scalp and scarify once. Damn. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. And actually, two more quick things while I think of them in terms of timing is if, that, if, if you want to do this to your lawn, just this, scalp and scarify because excess growth is an issue that you've got. In Australia, you've still got a couple more weeks, probably until about mid-March. If your lawn is healthy and it's going well, you know, it hasn't really struggled through the whole season and, and your lawn struggles to grow in general, you've still got time. For a full-scale reno, you've got a little bit less time, probably. In fact, actually, you probably got a bit longer than mid-March if you want to do a full scalp and scarify, and, you know, especially if you're a bit further north. Um, it depends what your issues are. If you want to just do a light scalp and more so top dress to improve your levels. If you really want to core aerate to improve drainage and other things with your soil profile, there's still time. Um, and something else that you'll be noticing me here, I'm about to go on a really odd angle. I never mow on this angle or anything, um, but I just, something you want to do with, with your scalp and you will have probably hopefully noticed me doing in this video, is going in different directions. So what I'd like to do is, what I'm going to do with this scarify is go just on a really odd direction this way and then hopefully tomorrow morning, um, scalp, and because I did my main scalp that way, I wanna do another scalp that way, because they're two really common directions that I mow this lawn, and yeah, you just wanna find your little undul undulations and hit them at as many angles as possible to pull up as much of the material as possible. There you go, scalp and scarify finished. That was a bad catch. Uh, scalp and scarify finished. Uh, been at it a bit over an hour this morning. So yeah, to get this lawn down to dirt, we're probably looking at like, you know, um, I was saying about two amp hours per 100 square meters, probably about two hours per 100 square meters of work uh, to get it to this point. So even that last scalp I did, debating, I probably more so cleaned up clippings, I'm not sure just how beneficial it was to get the lawn a lot lower um, and whether you know I really had to do it but either way it's fine um, I've cut well down into that crown so I'm really happy with that um, and yeah now I'm just due to logistics and this video is probably already pretty long so um, there's going to be the next part of this video where I call aerate and I top dress um, apply some products so that is coming up. Literally finish this video, start a new video, make sure you look out for that one. And yeah, look, you want a healthier lawn for winter? Um, rip out the dead stuff. Do it soon. Um, you don't have to go this slow. You can go a bit taller than that. You could just drop a notch or two of your mower and it'll really, really help to get some nice, crisp, fresh, clean growth after what may have been for you a tough season with different challenges. So yeah, thank you for watching the video. Hit subscribe, please, if you have enjoyed it. Um, a lot goes into these videos, and so, yeah, a little click on the subscribe really, really helps and is appreciated. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.